Let's say you're making a game, and in this game, there is an elephant. I'm going to do my best to draw an elephant. That was terrible. And this elephant, that's the tusks. And this elephant has a head. Now the elephant can be positioned anywhere in the world, he can be in any orientation, he can be facing any direction. And his head can be, let's give him some eyes. His head can be turned in any direction. He can be looking up, he can be looking down, left, right, doesn't matter. And on his head is a flea. And the flea can be anywhere on his head, in any position on his head. He can be facing down or facing up or facing wherever, it doesn't matter. We know the position and orientation of the head relative to the body, and we know the position and orientation of the flea relative to the head. My question to you is, what is the position of the flea relative to the entire world? We've solved problems like this before. We know what the local coordinates of the, of the elephant are. Shift. Here you are, shift. 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 Why does this... I don't get it. Here's the local coordinates of the elephant. He has a local origin right here. And we have a matrix that transforms the elephant to his coordinates. We'll call that matrix E. Okay? E. Then we know, we know the coordinates of the head in comparison to the elephant. Okay, so we have like, we have this vector here that is the translation of the head in the local coordinates. And then we have an orientation. So that's another matrix, H, I'll call that H, that gives the position of the head relative to the body. And then we'll have one last matrix, F, that's the position and orientation of the flea on the head. And so if you have this vector x, which is in the local space of the flea, and you want to get the global vector that corresponds to that local vector, then you just multiply by f, then multiply by h, then multiply by e. And all three of these matrices are these TRS matrices that you've seen, except in this case, S is always just, there's no scaling. So S is always just an identity matrix. So they're basically just TR matrix or rigid body matrices. And so if you have this vector in the local space of the flea, then you can get a global vector. And if you want to do the opposite, if you have a global vector and you want to see where he is in relation to the flea, it's, it's the same process we've been looking at. You invert the uh, elephant matrix, and then you invert the head matrix, and then you invert the F matrix, and that'll spit you out the X vector. So we're in the global space, and then we put it into the elephant local space with this guy, and then we put it into the head local space with this guy, and then we put it into the flea local space with this guy. So, but once we do this, once we have a vector in the global space, we're not done. In order to, to send the the scene to the video card, we have to transform this entire scene so that the camera is is at the origin and it's looking down the negative Z axis. So I'll, I'll write that. I'll draw how that looks uh, here. So here's the camera that's looking at the scene. This is like an eye. Okay, this is a symbol that's commonly used for the camera. And he he wants to be at the local local um, coordinates for him that look like kind of like this. Okay, this is uh, poorly drawn, but this is going to be the negative z axis, and this here is going to be the uh, x axis, and this is going to be the y axis. So this side down here is positive z, and this side up here is negative z. That's where the camera wants to be. So we have to take all these global vectors and put them into the local space of the camera such that we have a, we're looking down the negative z-axis. So that's a huge bother, but let's, let's, start, let's start assembling a view matrix 
that we're going to call v that will transform all of these vectors into the local space of of the uh, of the camera let me draw here right quick the global space vectors so that we can have them for reference this this one is the forward vector and it's usually x but i'm going to call it f for now f this one's the right vector it's usually z but i'm going to call it r and this one's the up vector it's usually um, y but i'm going to call it u just just to disambiguate because i don't want to be using x y z for both of them so first let's make a rotation matrix r that represents our camera rotation okay so what used to be what's f here is negative z here right so in our x y and z columns of our matrix and this is the translation column here which is just going to be zero but in the x y and z columns our z columns should get negative negative f or you could say that the that the f vector that's the z column gets the f vector should go in the negative z direction or the negative f vector should go in the z direction either way you want to think about it now the the up vector is going to be in the y direction so i'll put that here so the y column gets the up vector and then the right vector is in the x direction so right that's this column here and then we also need a translation matrix but this guy is going to be easy I'm just going to use a block matrix it will be the identity up here and it will be let's say that this point right here the origin of the camera I'll call that T and so here's here's T right here 0 1 these are the block matrices that we used in the previous video now we have our rotation and translation matrices and th these are matrices that take you from the local space of the camera to the global space just like we have up here just like we have up here so uh, let's see we want to do our rotation first and then our translation of our vector of our vector in the local camera space okay get your global space vector and, but what we want is, uh, and, and this, this right here is, is V, okay? But what we want is actually V inverse because we have, we have a, a global vector and we want to move it into the local space of the camera just like we did up here. So we know how to invert these matrices. We have to flip them around, R inverse T inverse G. So let's take a look at, at what our final V inverse, which is going to be our, our, our view matrix, is going to look like. Um, let's take this area up here, this upper 3x3, three three, and call it R3 like we did before. So it's again going to be like the same exact as in the last video. R3 transpose, a 0 here, and the negative R3 transpose times t times t so um, in other words we can use our our previous tr matrix inversion to create this this view matrix yes so that was a really complicated explanation but this is actually going to be a really simple um, implementation Usually with these construct camera view sorts of methods, you're past the position of the camera, the direction of the camera, and the up vector of the camera. And so the first thing I do is create a right and up vector uh, for the local space of the camera. And uh, we're going to use that to develop the R matrix. Vec, let's see, what is the... Here we go. So vec direction vec oh except that according to our according to our formula we're gonna pass for forward we're gonna pass vec cam right and for up we're pass vec cam up as normal 
but for the right, we're going to pass negative vec direction. That is directly from our formula. So that th this will create the upper three by three matrix. And then we'll create one more matrix for translation and we'll set the translation for that to the position of our camera. And then we just have to do our time, no, T times R and invert it and that is what we return. And that should work just fine. And it sure does work just fine. This is funny because we're spending all this time and energy just implementing something that really I, we already had, but we have to, um, but now we're actually learning about how it works. So it, this is good. This is good. We're learning something that we used before but didn't know how it works. So now here, we don't even have to do that, that R times T times R thing because I'm just going to rename this vector uh, matrix R to matrix V and stick in the, you can see the, oops, you can see the how I construct this matrix. I give it the forward, up, right, and then I can optionally give it a position. So we're just going to stick the position in right there. And like we learned in the previous video, when you do a T times R, the position just gets thrown in on the right there. So this, this should work just the same way. Um, we don't even have to multiply T times R. Very, very fast way of making a, a, a camera camera view matrix. So there's one more step that we need to do in order to finish our, our um, in order to send stuff to the video card. We've centered the view at the origin and now we need to apply perspective. You can see that things things in the, in, that are far away get smaller and things that are up close get bigger. So we need a matrix that will do that. And it's possible and it's pretty cool the way we do it. We're going to do it with homogeneous coordinates. See you next time.